How you guys doing? CGF here once again with another Giants video. We are looking at more NFL prospects. We are looking at the number three rated wide receiver prospect in the draft. Of course, everyone's going to have a different opinion about this wide receiver. Some are going to think he is the best wide receiver in the class. Others think that perhaps he's a bit overrated. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about Rome Adunze, a guy, if you follow Giants mock drafts, if you follow other content creators, he's a guy that is being projected to go to the Giants. So we'll see what happens. We'll see in this review what I believe he should be, where I think he should go, his strengths, his weaknesses. And let me preface by saying this. My view of Adunze has been evolving. Originally, I was a little more higher on him, but I've been doing a lot of deep research into his games at Washington. And I will say that my opinion is kind of starting to change. So we'll get into that. If you stick by and watch this video, you'll see what I'm getting at. But before I get going, please like, share, and subscribe. Love you all. I really appreciate your support. It really helps. All the likes, all the shares, all the subscriptions really helps grow this page. So thank you very much. So let's get into Roma Dunze. Let's talk about him. He's six foot three, 215 from Washington. He was one of the electric playmakers at Washington. Michael Penix Jr., another guy who's kind of polarizing someone who could go in the first or second round, was his quarterback. And then you had Jalen Polk, another really good wide receiver. Washington was a very successful team last season obviously they made it to the championship game but they were upended by the eventual champion Michigan so let's talk about Adunze let's talk about his career at Washington as you can see here he, his statistics were really good his last two seasons in particular he put up over 3,200 yards with 24 touchdowns he was utilized in a lot of different ways he wasn't just a chalk wide receiver in my mind they used him on a couple of gadget plays he was a punt returner so Roma Dunze was used in a variety of different ways which was a show of his versatility so let's talk a little bit about some of these awards that he was nominated for I will not say that award name because I butchered it the last two times I've tried so you could see it on the screen he was also a first team all pack 12 in 2023 and 2022 and he was a third team all american in 2022 really good um, um accolades for dunze so let's talk about his strengths okay and this is where we get into the nitty gritty so i believe he has plus size and athleticism for him 6 foot 3 215 and just take a look at how smooth he moves in this play that I'm going to show you. Just a really smooth operator. How big a part of the run game he is. Guys will have to step up. Roma Dunze in traffic makes a catch. And we're really smooth. He has the ability to maneuver very well. That's something on tape that really jumps out to me. He also has really good hands. So that was displayed in this next clip. I'm going to show you this touchdown reception. Just take a look at his hands. Really, just, just really good hands, able to run a nice route there and get open. And this one here, this touchdown I'm going to show you right here, shift. Really impressive. Shades of OBJ. Take a look at this this touchdown. Just a really, really good touchdown. To get the snap off. Here it again to the end zone. Right side this time. What a catch from Odunze. <laughs> I was so good. I was just one-handed. What a touchdown. So you saw on that last play, body mood, movement, fluid, effortless, easy one-handed catch. And he also has an advanced understanding of the game, something that I talked about when I did my Marvin Harrison review. So there's a lot to like about Adunze, and he's also a plus route runner. So now you're probably asking yourselves, so what's the bad news, CGF? There has to be some bad news. You said that you changed your estimation or you changed your opinion on him. Let's talk about that then. So his weaknesses not explosive off the line of scrimmage. That is something that watching the tape I've seen, my perception is, is that he doesn't jump off the tape like guys like 
Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors do. And, and that is something that I want to see from a guy on the collegiate level. And for me, you want to see those those plus traits on tape. And honestly, I just didn't see them. I, it, it, and for a guy who's a senior who had four years of experience at the collegiate level, you should be seeing that. And I just didn't see it. So here's something here, and I have to show this because this is the thing that jumped out to me, and I was watching the tape. And this, these two clips that I'm going to show you were against Christian Gonzalez from 2022. Christian Gonzalez, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he plays for the New England Patriots. He's a really good player. And just watch how he played on these snaps against Gonzalez. And this kind of plays into the whole jammed up on the line against aggressive defensive back. So just let's take a look at this here. As you saw on the bottom of the screen there, that was Roma Dunze and he fell down because he just couldn't get free. And, and that's just something that I noticed from this game. There were several instances where I just felt like he was being bossed around. Here's another one. Take a look at this play. My biggest thing is by looking at the tape of Adunze is that when he faces again, when he faces off against really good cornerbacks that get physical and get in his face, he seems to struggle. And in this game, he had six receptions for 56 yards and no touchdowns. For a guy who's supposed to be elite wide receiver, you want to draft him. You want to see him put up a good fight against these top of the line cornerbacks. And I just did not see that in this in that game. And there are other instances if you go through his tape where you see that from him. I believe also his footwork is average. I, I don't think it jumps off the tape when I watch it. I think it's just average. There are also examples of him catching the bot or catching the ball with his body instead of his hands on low throws. We saw that a little bit before with Malik Neighbors, something that is concerning to me. And then I also believe the, the fifth year with him is lacking. He doesn't have that top end speed to break away. You could watch almost every game of his, and there's a lot of examples of him not breaking big plays. He'll have a nice game, but he'll never get into break out and break a big touchdown. I just don't see that on tape. And then my feeling is that he's more Robin than Batman. And I talked about the Christian, Christian Gonzalez game. I just feel from watching his tape that he would be a really good number two wide receiver for somebody, somebody who's a complimentary piece. But for the Giants, a team that needs an, an alpha dog, a number one, I'm just a little concerned. I am hoping the Giants stay away from him just for that point because I just don't feel like he fits that mold. I think he's – and we'll get into the comparables. And I know that Wondell Robinson is a completely different player. He's smaller. But but that type of like complementary player is the guy Roma Dunze would be. For the Giants, he's not an alpha dog, at least from my perspective. So let's talk a little bit now about comparables. All right. His ceiling in my mind is Larry Fitzgerald. OK, Larry Fitzgerald is a guy that is a Hall of Famer. Obviously, he's a guy that was really good in the league and was around in the league for a long time. But even talk about Larry Fitzgerald, Larry Fitzgerald had the ability to break big plays. We saw that in that Super Bowl game against the Steelers had that breakaway speed. I don't even see that breakaway, breakaway speed in a Dunze. My mid-range comparable is Amani Toomer. I think he's more of an Amani Toomer type player. And let's be honest, Amani Toomer is, if you wanted to say, he's probably one of the greatest wide receivers in Giants history, if not the best receiver in Giants history. We could have a debate about that all day. Amani Toomer, if we drafted a Dunze in the second round and he had a career like Amani Toomer, we'd be very happy with that. But when you're drafting number six, you want a guy who's going to be an elite player. And I just don't feel that he's an elite player. And then we talk about the floor and I give you Nick Toon, who had a cup of coffee in the NFL. He's the son of Al Toon. He played at Wisconsin. You watch college tape. He kind of looks like him, at least from my perspective. That's, that's what scares me about this. The range of boom to bust is just so large so wide 
like I've done other other prospects where I feel like there's a little more of a tighter range. And this is the issue I have with Adunze. I just I'm I'm terrified about the fact that I think there's there's negatives to his game that will prevent him from being that number one wide out the Giants need. So, oh, man, let's talk about my take. And this is me kind of elaborating more in detail. I like Roman Dunze, which I do. I really do like him as a player, but he scares the hell out of me as a prospect. And I just explained why. When trying to pinpoint a range for this prospect, I had a hard time because I can see him being really good, which I can, or being a complete bust. And there are is there is a long history of first round wide receiver bust. You got look at these guys like Corey Coleman, okay, um, Jarius Wright. I, I mean, there's there's a long list of what John Ross. There's a long list of first round wide receivers that have busted, and I just feel like this is. This feel is it, it's telling me bust, okay? And I, I can't tell you why I feel it, but I just feel like he's going to be more more likely has a chance of being a bust. He has most of the size and physical traits that you would like to see from a prospect. He has plus size, good hands, and is able to run crisp routes. He has a wide catch radius and is able to elevate to the zenith to make tough catches. These are all tantalizing traits that would be very attractive to prospective suitors. He has been a class act that Washington has no glaring off the field concerns. He has also done quite well being the safety blanket for Michael Penix Jr. Who's had his share of accuracy issues. Watch any Washington game. Take a look at how many balls sail with Michael Penix Jr. That's why I really am not crazy about him as a quarterback prospect. I think he has major accuracy concerns. So what is the issue? Why does this prospect scare me? He is not Tarzan. He is Jane. I, I've alluded to that before. He is not aggressive despite his size. There have been countless examples of him being bullied on the line of scrimmage. I just showed you a couple against Christian Gonzalez. His top end speed is not remarkable. He is not going to separate at the next level. He has all the baselines to be a good wide receiver, but he's lacking the elite skills of a Malik Neighbors and a Marvin Harrison Jr., I think that Adunze will be a very good second option in the NFL. I do believe that. I think he can be a consistent stack compiler who can operate in the shadows of an alpha wideout. You want to draft him on a team that already has an alpha wideout. Like, for example, the Vikings at 11, a Justin Jefferson. You have a Justin Jefferson. They don't need, they probably don't need Roma Adunze, but you would like to have him as a second option. So, because I, that's where I see him. I see him as a second option. I provide a couple of NFL comparables. One guy from another sport that keeps ringing in my mind is Scotty Pippen. For those of you from New York, we all remember Scotty Pippen from the 1990s. He was the sidekick of Michael Jordan, a great secondary scorer who you wouldn't want to be the lead act. We remember the 1994 playoffs when Scotty had to be by himself without Michael and the Knicks beat him. So same type of energy, same type of feel. I think that Adunze is a sidekick. I don't think he's the alpha dog. So when compared to other, other wideouts of acclaim in this draft, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors, he scores similar in the basic skill attributes, but he is lacking in elite athleticism. Adunze could be great or a complete bust. And that is the thing. That's the thing that scares the hell out of me. I'm telling you right now, I smell bust on him. I am worried about him. I'm worried that the Giants would use a number six draft pick on him. I know I picked him in my first mock, but after more review, after further review, I would stay away from him. Stay away from him at six. If you want to draft him later in the first round, mid to later in the first round, I'm fine with that. But at six, that's just it's too risky for me. And I know that's different than what others are saying, but that's based on what I've seen. That's how I feel. So here's my grade for Roman Duenze out of five. Athletic ability, combine and Tate, 3.0. As I said, there, there are things about this game that just scare me. CCPTL, character, clutch, poise, toughness, leadership, 3.5. Competition mod modifier, 3.75. Didn't play against the best competition in the Pac-12. Football IQ and technique. I do believe he has really good technique. He does run routes really well. He has a good football IQ. I give him a high grade on that at a 4.80. An injury, a 4.25 with a cumulative grade. A uh, 3.86, which is still above average. So I'm not going to sit here and say he's a bad prospect. He isn't. I think he's one of the top three 
prospects in the draft, but at wide receiver. But here's the thing. As I said, if you're looking for an alpha wide receiver and you definitely want to pick one at six when you're in that position, he's not the guy to pick at six. I'm worried the Giants will default to that. Because if you look at the current makeup of the draft board right now, you look at the five teams ahead of the Giants. You have the Chicago Bears who still have Justin Fields, but we have to guess or we have to believe that they're going to eventually trade Justin Fields. So that will make sure that they go with quarterback and most likely they're going to go with Caleb Williams. Then you look at the Washington commanders who today traded away Sam Howell to the Seattle Seahawks. They're definitely going quarterback. Some people say Drake may, some people say Jaden Daniels. I kind of believe it's going to be either Jaden Daniels, or they're going to trade up to number one with the bears to try to get Caleb Williams because he's the hometown kid. Okay. So that's two threes, the new England Patriots. I don't think the new England Patriots are not going to draft a quarterback. Jacoby Brissett, whatever you want to say, I think they're probably going to draft a quarterback. There are people who are split on that. Some people say may, and other people are starting to say that JJ McCarthy might be a guy who new England may want to target. Obviously the last Michigan quarterback who played for new England turned out pretty damn well with Tom Brady. So then four, you have Arizona Arizona could go in a myriad of different directions. They could go offensive tackle, but most likely they will go wide receiver there. They just traded away um, Rondell Moore today. So there's more of a need for them to have a wide receiver at four. Number five. Okay, so five, we have the Chargers. Mike Williams just got released. They're in a situation to draft a wide receiver there. So six. You have, if you look at with neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. off the board and the top three quarterbacks off the board, the Giants have a really tough decision. And I tweeted this earlier today. I said that Roma Dunze is a pivot point in the draft. I think there are five guys right now that if you can get one of those five guys, they're kind of a sure thing. And I that's Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Malik Neighbors, okay, those five guys, a lot of experts, and I'll even say it, I believe those guys are as close to sure things as you can be. But then you have to make a decision, and the question is, is do the Giants at six, do they go J.J. McCarthy? I will give you a little bit of a preview of my thoughts on that. I think they should. I think if J.J. McCarthy's sitting there at six and then Denver doesn't jump them because I think that's going to be a high possibility, and there's the, there is the other side of the coin. If the Denver Broncos panic and they find a way to trade up to four or five and they jump the Giants and they draft J.J. McCarthy, that means most likely neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. will fall to the Giants. And then we're not having this discussion about Roma Dunze. But we'll have to see. And for those of you who are interested in mock drafts, I am going to be putting out my mock draft 3.0 tomorrow night. So stay tuned for that. So let's get back to Roma Dunze. Uh, my consensus consensus grade is top 10 early first round. My grade is mid to late first round, early second round. As I said, I have a different grading system. I have a different view on him. My view has evolved. I am not grading him as high as others are. And the best fits are Arizona, New York Giants, Tennessee, Chicago, Jets, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, and Dallas. And here are my wide receiver grades so far. For my prospect reviews, as you can see, Marvin Harrison Jr. leads the way at 4.62, Malik Neighbors at 4.12, and Roma Dunze taking up the real rear at 3.86. So as you can see there, there is a pretty big gap between Harrison Jr. and the other two wide receivers. I do believe that. And I believe that Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze are a bit closer if you look at it. So, ugh. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the Giants do. Obviously, there's been a lot of movement this week with free agency, and I'm sure the Giants are not done. So we'll have to see how things go throughout the rest of this period between free agency and the draft. We have, what, about six weeks, five weeks until the draft. So we are getting closer to it. So programming note, I am doing my mock draft. Just mentioned tomorrow night, mock draft 3.0. And then next week, we are going to be switching gears and looking at offensive lineman. Obviously, the Giants may not need to draft an offensive lineman early, but we will talk about them anyway. So if you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. Please let me know in your comments what you feel about 
Roma Dunze, as well as the rest of the wide receivers. I know most of you are not going to agree with me. Some of you may think my I'm way off base on this, and that's fine. I understand that my an- analyzation of certain things are not going to be what the mainstream narrative is, but I've been watching the tape, and I have serious concerns about him. I think he's going to be a really good player, but I am worried about how he's going to do against the best of the best. And when you get to the NFL level, you're not playing teams like Oregon State every week in Utah. You have to play against the best of the best. And if you can't do your best against those players, you're not going to last long in the NFL. So please like, share, and subscribe. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Hope you guys are enjoying the end of your week. Weekend is coming and more football, obviously. Keep your eye on social media. I'm sure the Giants aren't done. So, and before we go, that Saquon press conference, man, looked weird seeing him in that black sweatshirt with the Eagles insignia on it. Still can't believe it. But, you know, time goes on. Life goes on. All right. CGF is out. Talk to you soon.